It's been a long time. It's been maybe six months. I believe the last time I did a pickups video was back in the spring, I want to say. I could, it could have been a little bit later. We might have done some towards the summer, but it's been quite a while. So it's time I've done a recent pickups video. Now this will cover games, game accessories. I've got some vinyl. I've got some movies. And I've got a little bit of tech stuff for those of you who are purely here for the tech that will allude to upcoming content on the channel. So get ready, get comfy, get you something nice to drink, pardon the raining back door that's open like three feet from the microphone, you're going to hear a little bit of road sound, not a whole lot I can do about that. Let's jump in after a word from our sponsor. TunnelBear is the fast and easy VPN service that keeps your data safe and secure behind a bear. Sign up for your 7 day free trial and learn more via the link in the video description. Alright, as I said, it has been a very long time, so as far as tracking what I've recently picked up, that becomes pretty difficult, especially with all that I deal with. But to help with that, I have picked up a new metal rack shelf thing from Goodwill for 5 bucks. It's a little wobbly, but does a good job of helping me organize most of the stuff for recent pickups. But of course, I have different, uh, bigger size game boxes. I have non-disc based games. I have a whole pile of stuff here off camera uh, on the couch next to me that I'll be covering as well. But as far as direct games, this should be most of them. And there's some in the floor here as well. Uh, before, I, uh, there's going to be some weird stuff in here that I want to talk about and some stuff that's not even here that I want to talk about. Uh, so to put that in context, I just picked up or actually it just got delivered by UPS not 10 minutes before I started recording this, a new 4K monitor. Now for those of you who follow me on social media or have seen my setups and stuff, you would know that by now I already have two 4K monitors. The LG 31UM or MU97, which is a 4096 by 2160 4K monitor, DCI 4K, that's my new production monitor, and then I have a crappy old Monoprice as my right side normal 4K monitor. But neither of those have HDMI 2.0, which means neither of them can accept 4K 60 signals over HDMI, which is important if I ever wanted to do um, the newer game consoles, the uh, PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X and so on, or if I wanted to use anything with HDMI and 4K. I haven't cared. I said that I wasn't really worried about the upgrade. I have a PC if I want to play 4K games and otherwise I'm not worried about it. But I'm being sent, and I already have one here for review, quite a few 4K capture cards for review. Uh, those are becoming the norm and I need to be able to test those. And so in order to do so, I need a 4K compatible console and a monitor that can do HDMI 4K for the pass through to make this work. So I picked up this one. It was an open box uh, on B&H for 350. It's normally like 500. So it was a really, really good deal and only 10 bucks more than like the cheapest good TN option. And this one's an IPS panel. So it has a slightly slower response time, but it's still only 5ms which is still totally usable, but it's an IPS and going to have a lot better colors. Now, I did say it was open box. It still even has shipping labels on here uh, for whoever it was sent to next, so I'm hoping it works and it's not, like, totally beat up. Typically, to me, open box means, like, it's open in the store or something. This was returned by someone and shipped a few times, so I have to hope that it's in good shape and I'm trading what time I have before I have to leave in a few to do this video instead of hooking it up, so I have to do that later tonight around my meeting, but... Uh, this is the 27UD68, it's an IPS 4K, it is actually FreeSync, it's only 60Hz, but it is FreeSync. So if I ever get an AMD modern graphics card, I could test that, not too worried about it, this is going to be for my PS4 Pro. Now I have pre-ordered, I'm going to move this out of the way here, I have pre-ordered a PS4 Pro, uh, the Battlefront 2 edition. I love game themed consoles and I never got to get them as a kid or a young teenager or anything like that. And so I got the Halo 5 Edition Xbox One, and my PS4 Pro is going to be the Battlefront 2 one. Now I know there's all the garbage surrounding the micro microtransactions and all of that, but this is the best themed PS4 Pro that I can see. It comes out mid-November, probably by the time you watch this, it'll already be here. Uh, I am super stoked. Again, I originally didn't care, but I was also at the same time, while I said I probably would never upgrade, I've been holding off on getting games like Horizon Zero Dawn for the PS4 Pro. So... And in December, they have a Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition coming out on a physical copy for PS4 and PS4 Pro in December. So I'm getting that. Uh, so that's what I'm getting. It's going to look pretty slick, even if I hate the game and hate what they've done to it. It will look cool, and that's what matters to me, because I'm still going to be using it. So I've got that for all of the 4K capture cards I'm going to be testing soon, which we'll talk about in a moment. But a lot of you are here for the games and things like that. So we're going to go through that. Now, some of these 
are Goodwill finds and some of those that involves not being games as well. So I'm gonna pull a couple out here. I got f from Goodwill, it's an HD calibration wizard for HD TVs. I've heard a lot about these actually. Um, they've been recommended a lot for uh, calibrating your TVs. If you know you don't have the same kind of software and capabilities that you do on a computer monitor. So there's the HD TV calibration wizard and then there's a Blu-ray specific one as well. This one is a DVD, although they have a Blu-ray sampler disc included. Um, but I'm excited to collect more of this stuff to help calibrate and fine-tune my TVs as I get more into the display stuff. I haven't covered displays at all a whole lot on my channel, but as I've dug into why I like CRT monitors, and I'll be covering a lot of those on the channel too, uh, I've wanted to get more into normal TV tech as well. Uh, as well from Goodwill, we got... Actually, we'll start covering games. I got Prince of Persia The Two Thrones on PS2. This is greatest hits copy, not a big deal. Uh, I loved the early Prince of Persia games on PS2 when I was younger. They were a blast to play through, so I'm excited to get back to them. I know that I think I have them on PC, but they, the it's just like an emulator basically. It runs kind of weird, and so I prefer play them on PS2 like I did originally. NBA or NFL Street 2. I have NBA Street, I believe, up here on PS2. Is that what I have? I don't know where it is. Uh, I believe I have NBA Street. I believe that's the one I played with, like, the Polar Bear mod and stuff like that. That was a lot of fun, so figured I'd check out NFL Street 2. Again, Goodwill pickup. Uh, ATV Quad Power Racing 2 for the Xbox. I played a lot, again, on PS2, uh, ATV Off-Road Fury. And so I just wanted to see if there's other, these kinds of racing trick games that I might actually like. And a lot of these are in really good condition. Now, this was a find. I don't know that it was Goodwill. Yeah, it was Goodwill. Okay. This was a very weird find. It's a promotional disc. I don't know if it was with a kiosk, if it came with a console, or what. But it has Star Wars The Clone Wars and Tetris World both in here for the original Xbox. And they're on the same disc. And like I said, it has a not for resale, promotional use only. And it has both manuals just kind of shoved in here. Really interesting. I'm excited to take a look. I don't know where this came from. If you have information about it, I haven't looked into it too much yet, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but yeah. Also, I noticed I haven't mentioned yet my shirt. I, I had hoped that this would show up better on camera, but my sitting angle is not allowing for that. I am not advertiser friendly. This is, of course, discussing the demonetization issues that have been happening on YouTube as of late and such. And this comes from my buddy Lagundo's store. He has a YouTube channel where he makes a lot of Halo and other sort of videos. Does a great job. Been growing a lot lately. Go check him out if you haven't already. Uh, but it comes from his store on his website, so I'll have that linked in the video description. But, just had to pick it up, because it's been hitting my channel hard lately. Rolling through here, uh, we've got a greatest hits copy of Max Payne for PS2. I actually have at least two disc copies of Max Payne, but I've never had the case. It was when, uh, excuse me, a couple of years, like 2015 or 2014, GameStop did its, or at least locally, did its last hurrah of trying to get the PS2 games out of their stores, and with that, I picked up a crap load, and I wound up accidentally buying two copies of Max Payne, but I never had a case for them, just the disc, so now I have a complete copy, because why not? Alright, what else we got here? We've got actually an interesting story I can go ahead and get out of the way. So I've got three things here. And there were there was a couple controllers and stuff. I threw most of them away. They were in really bad condition. We have uh, a copy of Golden Axe for the Sega Genesis, The Bachelor, the video game on Nintendo DS, and Rock Band for the Wii. Now, uh, Golden Axe here is I don't even know if it'll work. It's I'm shaking it. It's got something broken inside. I'm pretty sure I already have a box copy anyway. But these were these along with a Turbo Turbo NES controller that was completely busted. A GameCube controller that was nasty as can be, a stand for a Wii, and like a broken PS4 chat headset were all in a torn up Kroger bag sitting next to my apartment dumpster. So I just kind of brought it in to see what the hell. And so I've kept these. I'll have to test code next once I actually have a proper Genesis to test it on. Uh, but figured I might as well add them to the collection if someone's going to throw them away. <laughs> it was a really weird situation. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I actually don't know where this came from. This was from one of my recent pickups, and the disc is moving around in here. I think I meant to open it up and see if the disc was okay, and clearly I haven't. This is Shadowrun Chronicles Boston Lockdown Run and Gun Tactical Combat for the PC. 
I had to have gotten this dirt cheap from like one of my reseller stores or something locally, but I don't remember. Oh well. I like collecting box PC games just because they're not as common these days. Alright, I'm trying to get games done first, or maybe we'll take a break. I did pick up from one of my recent GameStop trips, they had some cheap Xbox One games. Homefront The Revolution. I liked the original Homefront a little bit, didn't play it as much, but I liked the original game in that series, which was Frontline's Fuel of War. That game was a lot of fun, and so I've been meaning to go back and play front, home front, and then this is the sequel, and then Sunset Overdrive. Finally picked up me a copy. It is supposedly a really great game. It looks a whole lot of fun. It's from Insomniac. Pretty cool. Launch title for the Xbox One. Never bothered picking it up, because I got my Xbox One for Halo. That didn't work out so hot, although Halo's getting better. I may have a separate video about that if you want to hear my thoughts on Halo, but Halo's getting better. I'm feeling a lot better about it. Alright, uh, oh, yeah, also from the GameStop trip, it was only three bucks, Tom Clancy's In War. Just like these weird apocalyptic shooters. They're usually bad, but they can be fun. Uh, we've got, oh, this was from a yard sale, and I actually had to open it to see if it was inside. Uh, this is the Unreal Anthology for PC. It's, it's published by Ubisoft, and it's got a Peggy 16 rating, it's a UK release. Um, so these people, uh, these people got it off Amazon somewhere. It was from a local yard sale, and I just kind of, we were walking around, and I asked if they had any video games, and they said no, and then they were like, oh wait, there's one, if it hasn't been taken already, kind of buried in here, and sure enough, a sealed, it was sealed originally, and it's got Unreal, Unreal Tournament, Unreal Tournament, or Unreal 2 The Awakening, and then Unreal Tournament 2004, all on a compilation disc, and again, we've got Epic Games, Midway, and Ubisoft. Thought it was interesting. <laughs> Love the original Unreal series. Uh, a store, it's apparently a national chain, but we have one locally called Five Below. They sometimes have like old or reject movies and video games, and they had Battleborn. And I wanted to go ahead and pick it up so I could play it. I do realize it's sort of gone like free to play, I think, um, and it's not getting any more life updates, just like maintenance updates moving forward. But at some point, I really want to play it, and so I wanted to get a copy just because I like collecting physical copies, and at some point, I'll actually play it. <laughs> uh, Game-wise, we've got... Oh yeah, I've picked up... I've been really getting into the limited run games, and then stuff from Play Asia, uh, East Asia Soft, all of those like indie re... not re-releasers, but they do physical copies of stuff that hasn't normally been released and so I've been doing a lot of that especially the limited run game stuff and so I've got I did an unboxing of the Lawbreakers Collector's Edition game's pretty much dead on PC there's like 30 people playing they keep saying they're trying to fix it I think it will need to go free to play in order to really be viable moving forward and to keep an audience and a player base because I can't find a match in it at the moment but I wanted to support the project and it was a really cool collector's edition so I picked this up um, that was from Limited Run Games, and of course it came, It didn't even ship until like weeks after the game died, so that sucked, but Limited Run Games is pretty cool. Not a sponsor or anything. Um, but then I picked up, we've got uh, Ghost, yeah, this is from East Asia Soft, Ghostblade HD, which is a shoot 'em up A lot of fun. Love shoot 'em ups Been trying to get back into them because I used to play the heck out of them. So picked that up. Then I picked up, uh, oh. This is the bigger box for Ghostblade HD. It came with like some stickers and a manual and things like soundtrack, stuff like that. It was really cool. Uh, did I get? I have Rive here from Limited Run Games, uh, which is again an, uh, like a platformer shooter kind of game. It's all about hacking and stuff. Limited Run number 68, pretty cool. And I feel like I had another Limited Run release. I don't remember what it was or where it is. Don't know what happened to it. I had something else from Limited Run as well. Maybe I showed it in the last episode, I don't know. Like I said, it's hard to keep track of this stuff at this point. Alright, we're going to finish off games here. We only got a couple more, at least, on this shelf. I've got some other game stuff to talk about as we move forward. I got Wipeout Omega Collection. I somehow, even though it said everywhere it wasn't, sold myself that this would have the classic PlayStation actual case to it, so I actually imported it from the UK for that. It says it was just a sleeve. It's just a sleeve. But the game itself is really, really cool. And I was happy to pick it up. I got the Destiny 2 Collector's Edition. I really, really wanted the original Destiny Collector's Edition, and I could not pick it up. And so I got the Destiny 2 Collector's Edition for itself. Most of it's still in the box in my server rack at the moment, because that's the only place I have like room for it. But the bag it came with was the coolest bag in the world, and I'm super happy I picked it up. It's really cool. Uh, I picked up Raiden V, Raiden 5 Collector's Edition, or is that what it is? Director's Cut. It comes with the soundtrack, which is really cool. I played a lot of... 
what, Raiden X, I think it was called, it was a Flash version, and it probably wasn't made by the official developers of Raiden, or Raiden, or however you say it, um, but in, like, middle school and early high school, it was back when Flash games were huge, I played a lot of that as a kid, and then played a little bit of the real Raiden game, so I wanted to pick it up, released in the US on PS4, thought it was cool. Two Xbox games, well, Halo 2 multiplayer map pack, picked that up from a local comic shop, always, you know, I want to complete my Halo collection as much as I can. <laughs> That was the only thing I bought from the shop, so the dude kind of looked at me and was like, you know that's not like a, a, a full game, right? And I was like, I, I know, that's specifically what I want. And then I got 007 Agent Under Fire. No clue if this game's any good, not a whole lot of interest in playing it, but it's one of the few games you can use to soft mod, to exploit and soft mod the original Xbox, and I'm working on a big guide for that, so I needed all the games that you could do it with. Fairly straightforward, it was cheap. Uh, as far as Goodwill pools go, we've got a few more things here. Along with that calibrator, I also picked up, uh, which I'm not going to be able to use anytime soon, uh, but Slick Transitions and Effects for, cut, for Final Cut Pro and iMovie. Actually, no, it's just for iMovie. I don't even have a modern Mac, I don't have iMovie, this is for older OS X, uh, but I thought at some point it would be cool to use if it worked out for me. I hoard. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Uh, goodwill, Goodwill, alright, we've got some more stuff. There was the collector's edition of Pulp Fiction on DVD here. Box isn't in perfect shape, uh, but it seemed to have everything in it. And so, I thought it was really cool to finally pick up. Tarantino's got some cool stuff. It's got some little entries in here and little diary thing. It seemed pretty cool, so I figured, why the hell not? Uh, goodwill also had Zoe 101 the first season. In case I ever want a weird nostalgia trip. Batman and Harley Quinn. I'm loving the DC animated movies. I'm a couple behind at the moment, uh, but these have been really, really quality stuff. And so I wanted to pick it up, keep the set going, and I've, I've enjoyed every one I've watched so far. All right, uh, well, we've got a couple more here. There's a store locally called Bargain Hunt, which is just, they get pallets of like Amazon returns and things like that and sell them and you get dirt cheap stuff. And so I got these for like two bucks each. I got Dragon Ball GT Revolution movie. Why not? Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho Ghost Files, the uh, Yu Yusuke Lost, Yusuke Found, and then Hitch on Blu-ray because Will Smith is fun. I, I can't explain all these. I, <laughs> I just pick up movies that I knew that I liked at one point and want to add to a collection. Like I said, I hoard things. Alright, last normal movie before we have a big explanation here. Yu-Gi-Oh! The Dark Side of Dimensions. I loved the original classic series, so anything with Yugi and Kaiba in it, I will watch. It was a really good movie. I mean, there were the usual plot holes and the nonsense of the gaming, and there's some involvement of the newer dueling rules and metagame and stuff that I don't even begin to understand. Um, my biggest disappointment was Dan Green, I believe is his name, didn't do the Yami Yugi or a Tim voice. Y Yami never spoke throughout the entire movie. And I kept waiting on that the whole time. I kept waiting on him to, it's over. He never spoke. I was very disappointed. I don't know if he just can't do that voice anymore or what, but it was still a pretty good movie. It was a lot of fun. And like I said, I'll watch anything with Yugi and Kaiba in it. All right, so the next few are going to look a little weird, and I'm going to go ahead and explain it. I am a video nerd, I'm a technology nerd, I am interested in all sorts of video formats and the like, so naturally, I wanted to check out the HD DVD format. I never touched it, we never had access to it when I was younger, wanted to check it out and see what it's all about. So I picked up a really fancy Toshiba HD DVD player, which is supposed to be one of the best ones. Got it pretty cheap on eBay with the remote, really nice remote. And then I've got the Xbox 360 add-on player, which I'm hoping I'll be able to use on the PC to rip HD DVDs as well. And for that, I needed some movies. So, when I bought the players, uh, I got these all from the same eBay, eBay seller, and they're all sealed. Uh, we've got Constantine, uh, Michael Clayton, The Lake House, Blood Diamond, and Superman Returns, the one with Brandon Ruth in it, because Brandon Ruth is pretty cool even if that movie was not good. <laughs> And then from Goodwill, I also picked up Firewall and uh, Black Rain. So now I have somewhat of a competent set of HD DVDs to play through and test out the format, because why not? Alright, I also, uh, for those of you who are unaware, I got for Christmas, I believe it was the Christmas of 2015, my fiancé 
got me a brand new, still in box, because Sony was selling them on Amazon, PlayStation Portable 3001 series. It was the, one of the best Christmases I've ever had. I've soft modded it, made videos about it, been building a collection for it, and then sometime around June of this year, I've lost it. It's in this. It was in this big ass case, same case. I just got a replacement one. It, it's just gone. I can't even begin to wrap my mind around how that was possible or how that happened. I can't figure out where the heck it's went. We've torn the apartment upside down. I was currently, I was at the time dog sitting for my parents. We turned their house somewhat upside down looking for it. It's just been missing. So recently I found a local seller selling up a PSP 3001. And so I picked it up. It had a few games with it. And then I got, re got the case for it. To keep it safe. It's not in the best condition. It's missing the serial number sticker. It's got dust under the screen I will have to fix. It's the charging port isn't great. It's not a replacement for my brand new one, but the brand new ones on Amazon at least have shot up to $350. And so that's no longer a viable option for me to buy. And so that sucks. I'm going to keep holding out looking for my original. I'm going to keep holding out in case I can get my hands on another new one, but it'll hold me over for now. And there's a new way to soft mod them that I'm going to cover in a video. So there's some games in here and then the same seller had a big old stack of games and UMD stuff here. I'm not gonna go through every single one. Well, I'm not gonna like show them all, but we've got House of Wax, uh, Ung Back, The Thai Warrior, Midnight Club LA, Ben 10, Aragon, SmackDown vs. Raw 9, National Treasure 2 on UMD, that's okay. Uh, Hackers on UMD, I'm pretty sure I already have that. The Doom movie with The Rock on UMD. Iron Man, uh, Bounty Hunters, ATV Off-Road Fury, Blazing Trails, I'll be interested to try that one. Uh, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, Avatar The Game, MLB 06 The Show, Sega Genesis Collection, that should be pretty cool, and then Monster Hunter Freedom Ultra, or Unite, Freedom Unite. I haven't actually played any Monster Hunter games, I'm excited for the one coming out on PS4, uh, especially since they're having Alloy from, I think that's how you say your name, from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn as a crossover DLC thing on PS4. I'm excited, I've never played them, I know it used to be super hardcore, hoping it'll still be accessible to me and I'll still enjoy it. Very much looking forward to it. So I got all those to filter through and add to the collection. I'm sure there's duplicates in there and things like that, but very much excited for what that turns into. I also picked up Sonic Mania Collector's Edition on PS4, which comes with the Sonic statue on a fake Sega Genesis. And then I traded one of my color video monitors, one of my Panasonic, basically a PVM CRT TV, for a Sega Saturn. It's the original, he said it was, he was the original owner, it's in phenomenal condition, he threw in a couple controllers, and he threw in some games here, which are kind of uh, stacked under a couple other things. We've got, here we go, and they're all in different cases, which I find really cool. We've got Hang On GP Motorcycle Racing, we've got Battle Arena Toshiden Remix, looks pretty neat, looks like a little 2D fighting game. A very little Sega experience. I've said that in my last few pickups. I'm super looking forward to building that up, but I don't have a whole lot of experience. Daytona USA, super stoked for this. Uh, the Digital Foundry team, whenever they do like retro stuff, they've covered uh, this game a lot, and it looks like a lot of fun, and that theme song always gets stuck in my head. And I guess these came with the console or something, because these are in little cardboard sleeves, and it says not for resale. As this one, and then Virtual Cop. And then we've got, oh, this one also says it's a sampler, uh, Nights into Dreams. Excuse me. So, I'm excited. I realize the Saturn isn't like the most favorable of Sega consoles, but I'm still excited to check it out. And hopefully I'll get my hands on a Dreamcast soon as well. Over here in the stack of like misfits, we have a few other things. I've picked up, I believe this was at Goodwill, yeah. Uh, Tomb Raider 2 for Windows 95 and 98. Just in a weird little case here. It was on the shelf. This disc was in good condition. Figured I'd pick it up. I picked up a couple PS1 games from a guy on Facebook group. Uh, they were in really good condition, both black label. Medieval, and then Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, which I'm super excited to play. And the developer may have been teasing a remake. They were at least teasing the game for some reason, and we're hoping a remake. Um, Medieval, I actually played the demo on one of the demo discs quite a bit, which I'll touch on in a second. Um, we actually played the demo disc a ton as a kid, and my mom always got me in trouble. My mom had this weird policy for a long time where there were certain, like, seemingly mature rated stuff that she was just paranoid about at the time because the early 2000 the 90s and the early 2000s were all filled with the fears of technology and of other violent video games and stuff so i couldn't play certain things until i was 12 and that was one of those where she didn't want me playing it 
Um, but I played it anyway, and so finally got the full game. Excited to actually give it a go now that <laughs> I'm older than 12. Although I may not look like it since I've shaved. A lot of you all have left comments about that. Uh, picked up a couple Super Nintendo games. I got Yoshi's Island, which I will go ahead and throw in. I ordered a few uh, replacement cases. These obviously aren't meant to emulate the physical ones. These are custom cases. I've ordered a few because another game I got just goes right in there. Looks really cool. We'll sit on, sit on a shelf a lot better. Uh, because the other game I got, which is Super Castlevania 4, came in a case. So then I was like, well, I want cases for other games. Now, that was the only way I could get Yoshi's Island case like that. So I also had to get... Uh, was w The only way I could get it was in grouping here. So I've also got cases for Super Mario World, Super Mario All-Stars, and Super Mario Kart. So that just means I need to add these games to my collection. And actually, I'm fairly certain I have Super Mario Kart somewhere. I did at one point. just have no clue where it is. So I need to find that. Super Castlevania 4, Yoshi's Island, those with the more advanced graphics and stuff, but still adventure -y games were the games I kind of cared more about the Super Nintendo era, and I've been really frustrated as I got my little Retron mini thing for the NES and as I looked into retro games. None of the NES games ever stand out as games that I would like. It's because Super Nintendo is where it would be for me. I also picked up a physical copy of Quake. I used to have this in my collection. No clue where it went. Went ahead and got a new copy. It's in really good condition, and the disc has the soundtrack in it as well, so I went ahead and ripped the soundtrack, which is really cool. Been waiting on Trent Reznor to put up the Quake uh, soundtrack on vinyl up on the Nine Inch Nails website, and now they've taken the listing down, and they're doing some weird stuff with their website because they've had distributor issues, so I'm hoping this still happens. All right, so that is it from my rack here, or my shelf here, of recent pickups. We've got some more stuff over here, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little wee fluid tan pilt. Tan pilt? Wow. I've not been sleeping a whole lot lately. I still can't get all this on camera. Pan tilt is what I meant to say. Before we jump into this, I'll use this empty space here. I've also picked up a whole lot more vinyl to add to my vinyl collection. I've been building it up. I've got this nice little tote here from Meyer, full of it. We've got a special release of Avenged Sevenfold, Hailed to the King. Pretty cool set. We've got Bring Me the Horizon, uh, that's the spirit. You can't really see it on camera there. I was trying to get it to show up. I got the Skyrim Collector's Edition. It's got little picture CDs with splash paint on it and stuff. Full Skyrim soundtrack on vinyl, just released recently. Really sick. Uh, what else we got here? My Chemical Romance 10th Anniversary of the Black Parade. It sounds a little different than my actual audio files do of it. So I don't know if they re-recorded it and they just sound different now. Or maybe this is that issue of the playback speed not being constant on my LP60 turntable that a lot of people complain about. I've never noticed it before, but having listened to this album quite, admit, quite a bit, admittedly, it sounds a little different. So not 100% certain there. Picked this up at Best Buy, a picture disc of Caesar. Poison the Parish, not actually my favorite album or grouping of songs from them, but pretty cool picture disc. We've got Stardew Valley soundtrack. We've got uh, The Legend of Zelda Hero of Time, which is performed by the Slovak National Symphony Orchestra. Symphony Orchestra. And it's got cool art inside and awesome picture discs and all that. Really cool set. Uh, that one's old, that one's old, that one's old. Those aren't even mine. Then we've got, I'm just going to pull one of these up because the sack's falling over. I've got all four of the Castlevania soundtracks on vinyl. Not all of them are open yet. They're still sealed. So, been having a blast building up and listening to my vinyl collection. I did want to mention, we mentioned earlier, I also got a box, I ordered a box of PlayStation 2, mainly, I think, demo discs from the PlayStation magazine. They're all from the inserts. They're still in there, haven't been opened or anything like that. A huge stack of them. I want to do a full video talking about these demo discs as... I played them a ton. I mentioned with Medieval, I played them a ton as a kid. This was how I played a lot of games back then when we didn't have a whole lot of games. From I still have some of mine from Pizza Hut and things like that. And so I was super stoked to get my hands on more of them because I've thrown some of them away when I was younger and things like that. So that should be pretty awesome. And I've got a huge stack and it's great. In here, all right, what else we got here? I picked up the Die Hard Collector's Edition with the Nakatomi Plaza. This originally came out before Die Hard 5 came out, but they've updated it uh, with Die Hard 5 inside. It's got the full Nakatomi Plaza tower up here above on the shelf. It's got little cards of all the bad guys and all the Blu-rays, so pretty nice. It was only 40 bucks, I think, on Amazon, or on Best Buy's website. They had, like I guess, a clearance for it to get rid of them. It was pretty good. Pretty good deal. Uh, also, uh, 
Retrobit has been releasing new themed controllers. I reviewed their NES style controllers before. They have a couple SNES controllers, like this Mega Man one here I've been using with my Super Nintendo. And then they have a Sega Genesis one as well. I'll be doing a review of just all of them here. Pretty nice little controllers. Haven't used it a ton yet, but feels pretty good. Was pleasantly surprised with their NES controller. My buddy over at P2P Online, he runs a uh, video game, what is it, preservation channel. Uh, he sold me his GameCube D terminal cables. These run the digital signal from the GameCube. These are super expensive. They Nintendo only made a small batch of them. Uh, I think they made dedicated component cables too, but they only made a small batch of them. It has a proprietary encoder on here. No one's been able to replicate. So they're like hundreds and hundreds of dollars frequently on eBay if you want to pay the gouged prices. And my buddy sold them to me, so I, now I have them. So I went ahead. My original GameCube died in a flood in 2009. So I ordered the same GameCube I had. It doesn't have a serial number sticker as far as I can tell. Um, but the Indigo original GameCube with a Game Boy player, just like I had it, came pre-attached. And they didn't have the original Game Boy player disc, so they like burnt a backup. I guess it'll play. I don't. I didn't know you could just play them that way. Um, but I actually have my original Game Boy player disc too. And I think I even have my action replay memory card. I had everything except these two components. And then I had to order a third party power brick. Um, but then I'm going to hook this up to my Frame Meister. We'll touch on that in a second. And that'll be 480p, com or 240p up to 480p, up to 1080p, up to 4K Game Boy Advance games. It's going to be a complicated setup, but it's going to be the highest quality Game Boy Advance gameplay on YouTube. Just because I can, and because it's fun. These are really cool. He also included a little adapter to adapt them to component, but I'll be plugging the D-Terminal straight into my Frame Meister. Speaking of which, I guess I'll go ahead and mention... I thought I brought it over here, but I don't see it anywhere. Uh, I don't know where it went. I have the MyComSoft XRGB Mini Frame Meister, and I have the Open, open Source Scan Converter, the OSSC, on the way. These are upscaling units that do a great job of providing low latency, high quality 1080p upscaling for older video game consoles from analog signals. They're a huge deal in the retro gaming scene if you don't want a CRT TV. I got both of them coming up. I'm doing a huge which we'll talk about a little more. Oh, here it is. Frame Meister. <laughs> I'm doing a whole lot with analog video at the moment, so I'm gonna have a lot of content coming. But I picked both up, haven't had a time to dig into it just yet, but I'm super excited, and that D-Terminal will plug in right there. But super excited to get into these. Uh, this was like a random Walmart clearance or something. Xbox 360, Skylanders, Imaginators special pack. I like collecting them. I don't care about them, but they look cool. <laughs> uh, we've got, this is the generic GameCube power adapter I picked up off of Amazon from KMD. I don't know. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, that's as far as relates directly to gaming. We're going to get into a little bit more of the tech stuff for a moment here, uh, just so I can cover it. I'm trying to remember if I'm forgetting anything. Not everything is over here think that's it for right now. If not, I'll bring it up in the next pickup video if we do one. So as I mentioned before, which is why I got that monitor, we are covering a lot more 4K capture cards on the channel very soon. I have at least three coming in the mail or already here, and there, there should be more. It's a market that's brand new emerging. I'm going to get out ahead of it because that's what I do with these capture cards. So first and foremost, we have the Aver Media uh, Live Gamer 2, or Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, which is still 1080p 60 capture, but it provides 4K 60 pass-through. So if you want to um, play your PS4 Pro at 4K 60, but still record and stream it at 1080p, you can do that with this. Same thing with the Xbox One X. Uh, and I believe it still captures locally to the micro SD card. We will check that out. I have, of course, once it's available, the Elgato HD, or 4K 60 Pro coming in, and then Magewell sending me their USB uh, 4K card, and they've done a lot of good stuff with capture cards in the past. Excited for that. Uh, we've got the new Mod Mike business. Mod Mike is a sponsor of the channel. Actually, they're the sponsor on this video. Uh, I have a new Mod Mike, so I'll be taking a look at it. It's not a whole lot new, but it's a different purpose, so I'll be trying to do something fun with that. I picked up a Game Shark for the PS1. Not to use it as a Game Shark, but so I can soft mod it to play burned discs without needing to write a... Uh, or solder on a uh, mod chip. Uh, you can soft mod one of these bad boys, and I'll be doing a tutorial on that. I picked up Spider-5 Elite Calibrator when I was still trying to save my older monoprice monitors. 
Not been happy with my results. Not necessarily the fault of the spider. I'm also just terrible at color calibration, so... Can't say whether or not I'm happy with it yet. I'll do another run soon. I've been really afraid to touch my new monitor's color settings because I don't want to erase what's factory and set something bad like I have with the Monoprice one and then not be happy with it. Contour Design, who makes ergonomic products, sent over their new Unimouse. It's like a vertical mouse for RSI. Haven't had a chance to look at it either. Should be pretty good. Won't be my main mouse because it's lacking features, but might be a comfy mouse. Uh, Avermedia has been sending over some stuff. Excuse me, they sent over the uh, Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus. They also, in the same box, sent over they have a new streaming microphone. Looks like a little nice little condenser mic. I'll be taking a look. Always got to get my review on a microphone. <laughs> uh, they've also sent over a lot of stuff, actually, because I re originally requested this card right here, which is the C027. Uh, I don't know if they have another. It's just their HD DVR, as they called it. And actually, the model number when I originally bought it was MTV. HDDVRR, which is ridiculous, but I bought this in April of 2010. This was my first capture card ever, and this is still the exact same capture card, just seven years later, I can't count. Um, so I'll be really excited to do a new re-unboxing of my first ever unboxing, and cover it for, I'm doing a big video involving analog capture cards, so I'll cover it in that as well. They also sent over two video converters. I don't know if they're fully scalers, but they convert composite, and then this one converts component to USB. and I, Or not to USB, to HDMI for modern capture cards. And so, like I said, I'm doing a lot with analog video. Those will be important for those videos. Picked up a new Behringer Euphoria UM2 audio interface for review. Always looking into budget interface options for you guys. Uh, GeForce GT 1030 graphics card to do a upgrade your family PC style video. Super excited for that one. That's a new content area for me, but one I really need to get into. Trying to get through the rest here. Uh, I picked up a bunch of generic capture cards. So we've got a StarTech one, which is actually apparently the same chipset as an MCOMSoft XRGB capture device, which is apparently the best for 240p. So with some custom firmware, this is supposed to be the best 240p USB capture card ever. We'll find out. Uh, then we've got two from AGP Tech, and they're almost the exact same. One has, I don't even remember. They're both USB 2.0. Uh, one has SD card support. I didn't realize that one on bottom, but I got both. I may do a giveaway with some of these after I'm done. Doing a lot of capture cards. Uh, the last one here is the Diamond Gamecaster, which is an analog capture card through and through. No HDMI at all. Just pass through component composite S video. Uh, lastly, or I had a Datapath capture card come in for that same analog video project, an Epifan, PCI, two DVI capture cards coming in. Uh, last couple things here. Picked up the Steam Link. I tweeted this out a while back. Uh, it was on sale with Icy, which is like a platformer game. So you paid like 8 bucks plus $8 shipping and you got the game and the Steam Link. Worth it. Uh, and then this was another Goodwill find. This is the one of the a really early digital camera, the Nikon Coolpix 900. Uh, I just want to do a cool little retro style video on it. It said, part of the appeal was it said it had a Duke Nukem CD-ROM in it, which I wanted to get. I don't think that's in the box. I, I looked through it in the store. I don't think it's there, but I still went ahead and picked it up anyway. Whew, that was a lot of stuff. This is what happens when I put those videos off. Hopefully you enjoyed. These pickup videos seem to do fairly well with those who actually care about them, and they're the kind of content I want to keep sharing and building this audience. My throat is killing me. I need to go pick up my fiance from work, and then we'll set up the brand new monitor. I have a meeting lady later I'm excited for as well. Other than that, I don't think I'm forgetting anything other than I, a bunch of PC CRT monitors I'll be working on soon as well. So, hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more, leave me a comment with your thoughts or responses to some of my questions. I'll see you in the next one. Epos Vox is a Patreon-supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other benefits, go to patreon.com slash to learn more.